All right, so today we're going to do a quick how-to video on how I like to set up an OMF when I get a uh, feature film or any kind of a post-mix project, a uh, process that will hopefully speed up our process in the end when we get to merge all the dialogue and effects and the music. Um, this is just a mic for me to record and then also my master channel here. I also have a um, the Nugent VLM um, LKFS meter. Um, this is going to give me kind of a broadcast standard on how loud to mix the dialogue. Um, most of the time I'm going to be shooting for around negative 24. I like to do this for the whole whole thing. Start with everything kind of at a at a normalized volume and then from there can uh, put in some fader moves and some dynamic changes from there. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, actually create an aux track. So you can either do that from the track window here or in Pro Tools you can also hit Control or Apple Shift N. That'll give you a new um, dialog here. Go to Stereo and we're going to make an aux track. So this is to set up our, our um, RX-4, Isotope RX-4, RX-5, same process. We're going to go from RX-4 back into Pro Tools and vice versa, send stuff from Pro Tools into RX-4. I'm just going to call this RX Return. And then in Audio Suite up here, we're going to actually hit Noise Reduction and Connect. All right, so this is going to be basically our send and render. So the two two things that we're going to send to Isotope and the things that we're going to bring back in from Isotope are the two things. So this is going to be used a lot, so I like to um, actually take the target focus off. So if you click that little red button, that's actually going to keep this docked. Even if you open up a different plugin, it's not going to close it. At this point, the client will have their movie edited and sorted through, so they'll have sent me either an AAF or an OMF file, both of which can be imported into Pro Tools, preserving their track list. Um, and I'm going to import that into Pro Tools and start sorting through that and getting the dialogue, uh, the effects and stuff uh, sorted out so that I can um, start the postmix process. So I'm going to go to the folder that they sent me. This one's actually in reels, so kind of nice. It's kind of a section of the movie. So first I'm just going to grab this OMF, and I can uh, I can check out the text log and kind of see if there's any. Start time is 000. zero, zero. Frame rate is 23,976. So I'm going to go into my settings here and just uh, look at my session setup and just double check to make sure that my time code rate is going to be um, the same. So we're good there. I'm going to go in here and just grab this OMF file. There's multiple ways you can do this. You can either drop it directly into the session here or you can drop, drop it into the track list over here. And we'll just do that. Okay, this is giving me a warning that it's earlier than the current time. That's okay. A few options I want to look at here. Um, so normally what I'll do is not import the clip gain or the volume automation um, for this first pass. Um, it really depends on the editor. If they've done a ton of editing and mixing, sometimes I'll import uh, an OMF that has the volume automation that they've written in already. I know that for a fact that this one doesn't have that or doesn't have what I'm probably going to use, so I'm not going to import that information. Um, I want to make sure all these tracks are highlighted because I want to import all of them. Looks like we got quite a few. And then the track data to import, I like to unclick a couple things here. I like to unclick the pan automation and setting and the mute automation and setting. The pan automation is something that could have been transferred from, like, say, if they had accidentally panned something left or right, or if they have a stereo file, since OMFs don't actually import stereo files, um, sometimes those will be mono files that are written left and right. So I like to take out that information so I can just drop it into a stereo track for myself. Okay, so this is where it was saying that it starts earlier. So in Premiere Pro and the, the video editors, they all start at zero, zero, zero. For Pro Tools, it always starts at one or one hour. So that's where that difference is happening. 
So let's go ahead and push OK. So it's going through and locating the audio files. Okay, so this is one of the issues that I've had sometimes with OMFs. Right now, when I import it, it says 837 audio files were not find, found. Um, so it's asking, do we want to automatically find and relink those, or do we want to manually do that or skip them? I want to go to manually. So basically what I'm going to do is open this, uh, hit manually. This will open the relink um, window. And I'm going to come into where that movie OMF is, and that's on this drive in real two so I know it's in here and it's probably in this file so I'm just going to click that it's telling it where um, Pro Tools is going to look so now I have to select all the files that I want to try and relink so all those are selected these are the ones that they have information but they can't find the actual audio file I'm going to select those and hit find links now here's the important step on this is um, in order for this to find it, you kind of have to make it less specific. So I'm going to take off match duration and then I'm going to go find my name. I'm going to hit OK and it's going to search that folder. All right, so it searched and it see these little link buttons. Um, it found candidates for those all those files. And at this point, I'm just going to hit commit links. Yes. So we can kind of see what Pro Tools is doing. It's calculating waveform overviews. What that means is it's basically going through and writing these, measuring the amplitude of the waves, and writing those into these um, overviews. OK, so that's all done. Um, it looks like uh, if we look at our look at our stuff, I'm gonna make our tracks a little bit smaller so we can see more on the screen. All right, so we've got um, the OMF dropped in. Everything's good. Everything's connected. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is actually bring in our video. So I'm gonna go to that same folder, um, get our movie. So to import that, I'm just gonna do the same thing with, as I did with the OMF. I'm just gonna grab that video file drop it into the track list at this point it's going to ask me if i want that to where that needs to go i want it to be the session start and i want to import the audio all right now it's going to ask me where to put that audio file and we'll just use the, the default audio file for that Cool. So it processed that audio, dropped it into a stereo track for me, and it's all up here. This is going to be showing frames, which is cool, um, but this eats up a lot of processing. So the main thing you want to do is, first of all, just change this over to f from frames to blocks. So what that's going to do is take all those frames out. It's not going to have to process every single zoom that you do. That's going to free up a lot of system resources. So now we just got that main video track here, and you can kind of see um, that video rock in there. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is make sure that um, the video and the OMF are synced up. A lot of times I'll get, um, if it like on this one, it doesn't have a two pop at the beginning. So I need to listen to these together to kind of see, um, to make sure that these are the audio and the audio from the video, the master video and the audio from the OMF are, are synced. Okay, so I'm gonna solo that, and I'm just gonna solo one of these uh, one of these other audio files to see what it sounds like. Why did you and Daddy split up? Uh, I mean, I know that it was another woman, but was it a problem? I found your father's girlfriend to be a problem. So actually, it sounds right on. So that's good. I found your father's girlfriend. So I can drag up. Uh, see that this one has some waveforms. I'm gonna drag this up right next to this guy zoom in a uh, cool way to zoom in these is if you hit option shift and then scroll wheel on the Mac or alt shift scroll wheel on the PC so I'm gonna zoom way in here so you can kind of see where they cross the middle or the 
they go from polarized from positive to negative and it looks like they're really really close so that's good right on so that's uh the that's a big step for us to make sure that everything's in sync it's very important a lot of times it's uh might not be perfect like that so um hooray for us <laughs>